It's the 2AA semifinals of the CIF Southern Section 4 Basketball Championships presented by Farmers. And it is the Lawndale Cardinals flying into the Tiger Lair. McDowell Gymnasium at Elsinore High School, Roberson Court, Rufus Washington. Both of these teams, the Tigers and the Cardinals, have not gotten this far. They haven't, but somebody's going to get the move on tonight. Huge, huge game for both programs. The folks here for Elsinore have been very hospitable. Lawndale, of course, haven't made it this far for the first time in three tries. Four tries, actually, their first time. They're excited. For both teams, here's what it comes down to. You are one step away from the sectional finals. That's right, at the Honda Center this weekend. We're going to talk about the Lawndale Cardinals, Karen Bright. And uh, it was a long drive out here to Elsinore. This is our second drive out to this neck of the woods. How do you think they feel? Yeah, I just talked to Coach Brownlee, and he said they had a nice, comfortable ride up here. Usually they've been using regular school buses. This time they got a coach bus. They had room to stretch out. He said they're rested, they're focused. The bus driver told me that it was silent. He had to check up in his mirror to make sure the team was still there. So these guys are ready to go. And uh, they got to be ready to go because these Tigers, they are for real. They, uh, they're not as tall as Shemezi and Buddha, but they still have some outside shooters that are tall. They absolutely do. They've got a couple of guys averaging over 20 points apiece. And this is a program with a storied history. It's a winning tradition. They understand winning. A school that's been around for 121 years. Lawndale Mike can't match that. But also, it's hard for them to match 216 guys, as well as Delano Beckles and the rest of the crew that Lawndale brought over here tonight. We'll talk about the Elsinore Tigers for just a moment, Karen. And the head coach, Rick Walter, has been here for 23 years. This is his first time in the semifinals, and he has a great team to bring them uh, up to Honda Center next weekend. Yeah, and he says hunger is the real thing that Lawndale needs to worry about tonight because his team is hungry. They've had tough breaks in the playoffs these past few years. They're ready to get beyond that and go forward. All right, and Rufus, any final words from you? Where uh, The big thing that we've talked about is the attitude of Shemezi Matu. How do you think his uh, where his head is at today? Well, in talking to the coaching staff, they said every, and the bus driver, by the way, we got a, a special interview with him. He said the entire team was calm and collected on the ride out from Lawndale. They barely knew that they were on the bus. They are focused. I asked Coach Brownlee, are you, are you guys guilty of looking ahead? He said, no. They understand that there is no Saturday if you don't win on Tuesday. So I think they're coming in with their head screwed on right, ready to play, and ready to take that final step, which would be a crowning moment for Coach Brownlee, Chamizu Me Too, and the other guys like Brandon Norman and some of the others who've been in this program for the whole four years. This is a special moment for them. All right, and we're going to come back with the starting lineups and the opening dip-off of the 2AA semifinals right after this. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Back here courtside at Roberson Court inside McDowell Gymnasium. And uh, we're at Elsinore High School. And uh, boy, the two AA semifinals of the CIF Southern Section 4 Basketball Championships presented by Farmers. And there you see some of the Tigers getting warmed up. And we're going to have our national anthem. Sounds like she's a favorite, just like Kiara or Kiana at uh, Lawndale is. This is Kiara.
Kiara Matthews with a stirring rendition of the national anthem. And you could hear the Tigers in the jungle at one end zone in the northern end zone roar their approval. Well, they've, they've matched Londell on national anthems so far. <laughs> I have to give them credit for that. And now let's introduce you to the Londale Cardinals. And the Lawndale Cardinals are coached by Chris Brownlee in his third year, 60 wins and 23 losses. There you see our officials tonight, Rufus, to tell you those gentlemen's name in just a moment. And the Cardinals are 19 and 10, 7 and 3. Tied for second in the Ocean League, have won five in a row, are four and three on the road. Starting at one guard for the Lawndale Cardinals, it'll be number zero, T.J. Johnson, a six-foot senior. At the other guard, the shooting guard, number 24, 6'2", senior, Delano Beckles, who has really put this team on his back, Rufus. Oh, he had an outstanding game, last game, player of the game. Well, without his effort, they wouldn't be here tonight. That's right. Number 25 at the wing, 6'3", senior, Chris White, who is headed for UTEP. At the power forward position, a 6'10", 210-pound senior, number one, well, they, they're giving you Shemezi Matu, the six foot ten, 200 pound senior, headed for USC. And in the middle, it'll be number one, Broderick's Buddha Jones, the 6'10, 210 senior. He's headed for San Diego State. The Cardinals are assisted by Johnny Parker and Chris's dad, Ed Brownlee. Now you see on the far left is Rick Walter, the head coach in his 23rd year here at Elsinore High School. The number seven seeded Elsinore Tigers, 23 and eight, nine and one, first in the Sun Belt League. They have won four in a row and are six and two at home. Pete Redinger is one of the assistants for, actually, I guess he could be a head, a, a, an associate head coach. And the first one out is number one, Nathaniel Dodson, a shooting guard, a 5'9 junior. At four, junior, six foot five, Big At one forward, you're going to like him, so says the coaches. Number 35, Michael Taylor, a six foot five, 200 pound junior, averaging 10 rebounds a game. Number 25, number 25, Kobe Williams, he's the small forward, six foot senior. <laughs> Another senior, number 15, Trayvon Lemkin. He'll be run the point for the Tigers. A 5'10", 160-pound senior. Is their three-point shooter as well. Averages 22 points a game. And this kid can really shoot it from outside. Number two, Preston Beverly, a 6'7", senior forward, averaging 23 points a game. And I think that he was uh, ripping up the twine in, in the pregame. He absolutely was. But that's without any defense on you. Of course, when you average 23, <laughs> you've done it against some defense, that's for sure. But uh, right now, boy, we're preparing for the tip-off and what promises to be, fans, one of the best games that you will see this season, barring a Saturday matchup, of course. Okay. Buda Jones will be tip, getting the tip-off for the Cardinals. It appears that Michael Taylor will take the jump for the Tigers. So talking to Rick Walter, and you could kind of tell by trying to research the Tigers that uh, they try to keep their numbers close to the vest. Of course, I'm sure if there's some college recruiters sniffing around, like I'm sure there are for a few players, uh, they will give it up for that. But we did our best, and now the Cardinals win the tip and we're underway. Delano Beckles has it down to Shemezi, and the ball is tipped, and stepping on the baseline was Preston Beverly. So long unfortunate to keep the ball on that possession, a near turnover. 
So already some good defense, and you can't keep your hands up because these guys are tall down the middle, too. They're tall down the middle. They're playing a zone defense right now. So Londell's outside shot will get an early test. Three-pointer by Beckles. Delano gets the Cardinals up first. Just about 37 seconds into the game. Preston Beverly with it. Ball is blocked from behind by Matu, and the rebound is to Buda Jones. Beckles wanted to take the three. And Beverly had an excellent look at it, but the pressure by Tremisi forced him to adjust the shot just a little bit. Nice pass by Beckles to Matu. Now the runner is a little bit short. TJ gets it back, puts it up, no. Rebound is tipped once, wow. twice, and a foul right. underneath, and it's going to be two shots, I believe, for Shemezi. So Foul's the foul. Go against number 25. That's Kobe Jones. His first personal. And Matu coming to the line to shoot two. Misses the first. Or did he make that one? Okay, I'm seeing. No, that's right. It was a three it was point. A, Delano play. made a three pointer. Right. There's Chris Brownlee. And the next one is too long. The rebound, though, is to TJ, but he stepped on the baseline, so it's turned over. Not a turnover because it was a loose ball. And it's out of bounds to the Tigers. So we'll get to see them again. Bringing it across is Trayvon Lampkin against TJ Johnson. Taylor wanted to put up the three. Beverly is there too, but there's Lampkin for three. That's off the mark, but two with the rebound. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Lawndale ball after it was tipped by Taylor. So good pressing defense by Elsinore. Taylor applying pressure. Almost uh, came away with the ball, but Went out of bounds against Elsinore. Jones has it, looking for Beckles. TJ on the drive, gets it to Buddha for the bunny. No, wow. the rebound though to Matu and a foul on the play. It's gonna be ball out of bounds and yes, there was a foul. Fouls on number 25. That's Kobe Williams again. His second personal, second team foul. Bunny into Matu, he tips it, and Delano can't save it. Tried to get it to Matu on that, uh, just throw it in and I'll dunk it. But there was Preston Beverly right there, who's got some good hops himself. And I think you gotta record that as a turnover against the card. Okay, so one turnover, first turnover of the game. T Dodson. TJ draws Dodson. Beverly off the mark. And the rebound is to White. White brings it across, gets it to TJ actually, now back to White. TJ drives, gets it off to Matu, can't get the handle, so wow. he gets the hook, and that somehow did not go down. Beverly with the rebound. Gets it down to Taylor, waiting for it. Oh, a block by Buddha Jones out of bounds. And so right now, Lawndale has come up with every loose ball, at least under the defensive basket, and as you'll see on the replay here, ball goes out off of Elsinore. Beckles with a quick three off of the pass. No, wow. and the bad pass, and it's thrown away to Williams. Right Beck idea by Chimizi. Looked inside, except he threw it to the wrong guy. Turn over Lawndale. These uh, Tigers know exactly where they need to be. Shot put up by Lampkin. <laughs> Ties the game up at three. Gets it to White. Now, TJ passes it back out to Matu. He wants to go down underneath off the glass, wow. no. And the rebound to White. White loses it to Dodson. Dodson on the break, four on two. No, shot, rebound, Beckles comes up with it. Back come the Cardinals with 4.45. Oh. It's with the dunk. And there's a foul on the play. So a three-point opportunity for Chimiza Mitu as he was fouled by number two, Nathaniel Dotson. 
So out of the ball game is Williams. Into the ball game, number 22, Anthony Hay Reyes. So Preston Beverly with his first personal. Matu, who has already missed two from the line. Misses three, but there wow. is Delano. They he missed, missed it. Four inside shot. And back come the Tigers with 4.34 left to go in the first quarter. Tight roping is Michael Taylor along the, the sideline. Now Lampkin with it. Being patient now. There's Beverly. Now down low to Taylor. That's a lot of time it in the sure lane. was. I was just thinking the same right. thing. Ball blocked out of bounds, Rufus. So this, these officials are from Orange County, right? South Orange County in particular. There are okay. two units in Orange County, and you got North and South. This unit specifically is from South Orange County. So we have some perspiration right in front of the Cardinal bench. It right looks now, like Luke, and excuse me, Wandell has missed a wealth of opportunities inside on the offensive end. They sure now, have. They've countered that by controlling the defensive board, and that's why they're leading by a small margin of 5-3 to three here with 4.15 left in the first quarter. Ball bounced in to Taylor. Taylor, shot is blocked by White, but we've got a foul on the play. That's say White hit him on the arm. Well, the block looked real good. So first team foul on the Cardinals, first personal for White. Going to the line is Michael Taylor. Misses the first one. Taylor averages 13 points per game and 10 rebounds. It's a pretty well-rounded kid, and he's just a junior. His coaching staff said he, he is a player. Misses both of them. So both teams still having some butterflies as the Cardinal Band is flying into McDowell Gymnasium. Boy, the traffic was just horrendous today, as it usually is on the 91, but more so because of a bad accident. TJ down underneath to Shemezi, oh, lays it up go. and in. Nice move by Shemezi with a half a dozen. Lampkins brings it across now to Beverly. Semez is guarding him way outside. He puts up a long three and buries it. First bucket for Beverly, and look out. Both of the baskets are three-pointers for the Tigers. Ball is thrown way out of bounds. Get it. And no matter if it was caught inbounds or not, it would have been a backcourt violation. In any case, it's turnover number three on Lawndale. Right. But on that play, even if you know it's a backcourt violation, Lou, you have to go get the ball because you don't want to give them an opportunity to gain possession on a breakaway to the basket. And turning the ball over is Michael Taylor as he steps on the sideline. So that's the first turnover, and Shemezi Matu with some good defense there. Full court pressure shown by the Tigers, gets it to Matu. Now look out. Beckles gets it and a nice grab. Gets it over to Buda Jones who puts it up and in his first bucket of the game. And at least it looks like they're doing what Coach Brownlee, when you and I talked to him, said that they understood they needed to do. And that's what they've done all season. And that's look inside and go inside. And they're also showing a lot of patience and confidence tonight as well. Taylor has it, can't go over Jones, but does anyway. And Matu comes down with a rebound. And Lawndale is just controlling the board. And that's what they have to do. Because that's how they let Miracosta get back in the game the other night. Beckles with a miss, Matu with the rebound. Over Whoa. to Jones with the dunk. And that forces Coach Walter and the Elsinore, Elsinore Tiger team into a timeout with our score at 11-6. 32nd timeout being taken. And uh, that 30-second timeout, yep, and that really quieted the jungle, which is, there you see Buddha Jones with the nice dunk. Good passing by the Cardinals as well. And Semezi, instead of, he, he, earlier in the season, he may have taken that little baseline jump shot, but instead, he passed it to Buddha Jones. Absolutely. 
and good balance scoring thus far by the Cardinals. Lou, I've got uh, Buddha Jones with four, Chemezi with four, and Delano with the triple that started the game. That gives them 11 on the board. So I'm sure that both of these teams have a lot of butterflies. The Cardinals had a good chance to get a good nap on the way out here, whereas sometimes you play at home, there's a lot of stuff to do. Rondell showing some full court pressure. Uh, Tra Delano Beckles draws Travion Lampkin. Lampkin slips around. That wasn't over the top. You either got to call it or give it to Lawndale. They choose to give it to Lawndale, and we've got a sub coming on the floor now for uh, Elsinore, and that's Anthony Reyes. In for Williams at the 218 mark. Now Buda Jones with it, gets double teamed. That leaves somebody open. That's White misses, and fighting for the rebound, getting it, no. And Matu has it once, twice, wow. puts it in. Two. Has eight points. So he got two rebounds on that, Rufus. Right. Also Delano with the board as well. So, yep, they're winning that battle on the boards. 13-6 is our score. Lawndale's run off six straight points since it was 7-6. Now Beverly wow, and Matu in this go. jump ball possession arrow faces towards the Tigers and good defense by Shemezi. So they're finding out how quick Matu really is. There you see it on the replay. Dodson inbounds it right to Matu. Wow. And now a foul, foul on the play. Okay. Is that on Taylor? That's going to be on Taylor. So Matu that's came out of it a little good. bit more aggressive than you want to see. Okay, watch the play. You're going to see the foul. Okay, it's a given. Now, Shemezi's got to keep his cool on a play like that, too. So I wonder if a lot of that was, let's see if he loses his cool. Okay, give it up. Now over to TJ, dishes it underneath. Oh, Buda. Buda. A half a dozen for Brodericks. So right now the inside game for Lawndale is what's uh, staked them out to this large early lead and they're controlling the defensive board. Elsinore not yet able to get its primary shooters going. There's another one. Five rebounds for Samezi, but he gives it up to Lampkin. Underneath to Beverly, has the ball blocked away by Buda, but the wow. rebound comes yeah, over to yeah, Lampkin, and we have a foul. Now, that's a cheap one on Chris. Well, I got to tell you, that was a reach foul. Boy, a tough one for him to take. That's the second one on Chris White here with 103 left at the first. So the ball will be out of bounds to our right. And Quincy Pinker makes an early appearance on the floor for the uh, for the Cardinals. He replaces and Chris Brandon White. Newman is also in as well. So Beverly has it. Full court pressure by Pinker. Being a pass. 22 seconds on the shot clock. 49 on the first quarter clock. Now Pinker going against Lampkin. <laughs> now here comes Beverly driving and gets fouled underneath. Could it be Buddha or Newman? Well, let's see. It's a big call. I think they'll give it to Buddha, though, and they do. Okay, that's only his first. Third team foul. Going to the line to shoot two is Preston Beverly. And can't make the first one. Don't have his free throw shooting percentage, but normally a guy that scores you know, 20 plus points a game is a pretty decent free throw shooter, and he seeks to suck him. So that snaps the 8 0 run by the Cardinals. Now Newman with it. Newman has a wide open lane, so he takes wow. the bucket. The easy way. Brandon with an early basket for him. Brandon Newman, the defending tip of the hat award winner. Beverly has it. He'll bring it across the timeline. Definitely a right-handed person. Easy, Chimizi, easy. And don't need to block. pick up the foul. That's a block. I would suggest that you don't want to pick up a foul that far out on the floor. That's his first personal. Now the fourth team foul. Both teams with four team fouls. And we have 13 seconds left to go in the quarter. But you do have to like the defense. Chimizi's been 
putting on Beverly, but now he's getting a little more aggressive. And now he's got to be extremely cautious these last few seconds. The last thing you want to do is to pick up another four Three seconds. Three seconds left, and now the ball is batted out of bounds by Newman. So 2.3 seconds left, a chance to catch and shoot for the Tigers. Down by 10 in the two AA semifinals. This place is packed, but it's quiet, Rufus. Lampkin has it. He's going to have to fire from the half court line. Oh, he made it! That basket oh, good. my goodness! Wow. What a shot by Trayvon Lampkin to beat the buzzer and wake up the jungle. He sure did, boy. He had 1.1 second, threw it up. Nothing to lose, as you see on the replay. Nothing but net. So that puts Elsinore in double figures. And let's go to Karen. Guys, if you had a chance to look at Elsinore's student section, it's a college style student section. There's a big banner over it called The Jungle. I've seen construction workers, some tigers. They have everything back there. Luckily for Lawndale, they've been going the other way in the first quarter. They got their feet dug in a little bit, but it'll be interesting to see how it affects them going the other way this next quarter. Back to you. That's right, Karen, didn't think about that because there's the half court shot from about 45 feet away, Rufus. What a shot. Uh, out, uh, uh, just a huge shot. We saw that just the other night in the, uh, the losing her game. The kid from Hennon did that. Uh, when Tockets hit the three pointer uh, at the end of the half, it would spell the difference in the entire game, which ended up being 61-58. Right. But sent losing her home for the season. That was by Garrick Sherrod of the Sun Belt. But check that. No, not the Sun Belt. But here's Brandon Newman. Newman wants to go around Shemezi wow. and throws it away. And full court pressure by Lawndale. Gets it to Dodson. Beat Dodson travel. beats it. Dodson over to Lampkin. Three-pointer over TJ that went down and out. Reyes with it, but he has it blocked away by Shemezi and out of bounds. Wow. What happened, Rufus? I had well, an official block. It was out of bounds. It was off of Newman. You know, the, the, the space down on that end line, and to me, that's something that the officials are going to have to manage a little more carefully. you got folk actually sitting in an area that, quite frankly, they shouldn't be if you were to ask me. The players deserve to have all of that space to work with. Reyes with it. Now over to Beverly. And hands it off to Lampkin. Coach Redinger barking out the play to his point guard, Nathaniel Dodson. Exciting game here at Elsinore High School. Wow. And stepping on the sideline is Dodson and turns it over. Fouls are going to be on, uh, I believe they're going to give a foul on TJ instead. Okay, there it is right there, a little hand check. So that's TJ's first, fifth personal, or fifth team foul. And that hand check Lou, was a point of emphasis for officiating crews at the high school level this year. That, that hand on the ball handler. Lampkin with it. Puts up a three after the screen and buries it. Just Trayvon Lampkin jump. with nine. And that forces Coach Brownlee into a, turn, into a timeout, I should say, as now they've run off six straight points. A good screen by Preston Beverly. That got Lampkin just the opening he needed. And let's go to Karen. On the other side of things, the Lawndale student section is very sparse right now. Just about 20 cheerleaders. They said they had three buses leaving Lawndale earlier today. They left at four. Only one bus has made it. That's the one with the cheerleaders. Hopefully the rest will be on the way soon. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much. And you know we've got a rich tradition here at Elsinore High School when the gymnasium has a name, McDowell Gym, and the court has a name, right. Roberson Gym. And the student section you're talking about not having a lot of room kind of reminds you of and uh, kind of reminds you of Duke. Right. And now we see the Lawndale Cardinal students coming in. And boy, what we're about to see. So Brandon Newman puts it up and in. That's what we're about to see. Brandon's got four <laughs> points. 
So, yep, here comes the parade of Cardinal fans as bringing the ball across to Preston Beverly has it against TJ and underneath to Dodson. Dodson has it. Now Dodson over and that's stolen away. Stolen by Shemezi on the break. Shemezi running the break, gets it back out to Pinkard. Wow. Pinkard loses the handle on the ball, yep. gives it up to Reyes. Reyes lays it in. So a four yeah. point switch there, Rufus. Another right. turnover forced by Elsador. Now Beverly with it, misses, no. Another miss by Taylor, taken by Dotson. His shot's off the mark. Brandon Newman comes down with the rebound. And right Here comes down. Newman. Newman with it. Over to TJ, that's an air ball. And the rebound is to Dotson, and a foul on Shemezi. That foul instead, they're gonna call that one on Buda for blocking oh, you're right. the you're baseline. Right. My bad. And that's his second of the game. And all of a sudden, it's a 19-15 ball game. So in the ball game now is DeAndre Snedekor. And Preston Beverly's going to inbound it. And Brandon Newman did a good job of getting his hand in the way. Knocks it out of bounds. So, so Lawndale still nursing a 19-15 lead. But boy, this second quarter has belonged to Elsinore so far. Break two. Oh, the ball is blocked away. Now it goes to Brandon Newman. Newman back to Shemezi. And score the basket and a foul on the play. Shemezi to go to the line for the three-point play. The foul is going to go against number two for them that's, that's Preston Beverly. Beverly his second personal 15 foul so Matu coming to the line again looking to make his first free throw of the night can't do it yet rebound is off and taken by Zach Lips now over to Taylor Taylor wide open on the baseline had the ball blocked by Matu fast break to Beckles had a ball taken away by Dotson, and it's out of bounds on a good defensive play by Nathaniel, the junior. And Jamezzi fortunate to avoid the second foul on that play. Beckles looking to go. Actually appeared that Dotson got a hand more so on his arm than on the ball. And now we've got, got a, a foul got a call foul. on the knee. Got to have a push on Dotson. Yep. Daniel Dodson, so that's a sixth team foul first on Dodson. So out of the ball game is Reyes. In the ball game is Lips. We, he was already in, so now we have another. It's getting a yeah. little pushing and shoving going on out there. So the ball will just be taken back out of bounds. Pete Redinger looking, asking one of the officials what was the play. With two seconds expired off the clock, so they didn't completely reset it. Beckles with Move. it. Almost traveled, but lays it. No, <laughs> how did that not go down? And the foul is going to be on, is it on Shemezi? Yeah, it's going to be on Shemezi. And that's going to see, I think Shemezi, let, let's wait and see what the official says. Yep. That's they're calling yep. it his second. It is. Okay. So now it's one and one time for the Tigers and Preston Beverly. Doesn't make the first one, and so he doesn't get the second one. Rebound finally to Snedeker, and back come the Cardinals. Over to Newman. Newman wow. passes it in front, and is it going to be a jump ball? Yes, it's going to be a jump ball. And, and that's position. Elson, and again, this is a situation where the ball is thrown down to a seven-footer instead of up. Look, look at the trajectory of the ball. The ball goes up. You know, it's an easy play for him. Ball is inbounded. 
to yep. Lamkin with 4.50 left to go in the first half. Glad to join us on City TV, the 2AA semis. Here comes Taylor. Oh, boy, Snedeker. Oh, yeah, they're going to call it the other way? Well, let's see. I do yeah. believe they did. Well, that's nope. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Let's look at it. Yeah. Well, there's a shove by Taylor. Right, exactly. So Number 35. Taylor, and that's his second foul. And that's what the crowd doesn't see and understand. And that's what the official is telling them right now. That's Craig Hunt. Newman passes it along the sideline to Pinkard. Now gets it back over to White. A long two, won't go down. Rebound, though, is picked up and taken by Newman. Over to Delano. Gets it over to Pinkard for three. That's going to be off. Rebound is to Dodson. Missed opportunity for the Cardinals, who are up by six. Had a 10-point lead to start off the quarter. Actually, to just before the quarter. Now we have some shoving underneath. And let's see who gets nailed. That's uh, Chris White. That's his third. Eighth team foul. And now to bring Chris out the game. And that's Broster coming in. The forgotten man. See if he can give Coach Brownlee some good minutes. Nathaniel Dodson has yet to score a point. Misses the shot, but gets it to Beverly. No, rebound is off, taken by Snedeker. And that's key because both of the big men are off the floor right now for losing her, Buddha and um, Chemezi. Chemezi. And now wow. they say Snedeker stepped on the baseline. Turnover number six for Londale. And of course, they can have both of them out now, particularly while Michael Taylor is out. And also looks like, well, Preston Beverly is still on the floor. He's 6'7", oh. but Snedecor, they're leaving Snedecor to match up with him. That's a good matchup because DeAndre's got some hops. Lampkin gets around Beckles wow. and lays it up and in. He has 11, Rufus. And Pinkard with it, in and out, rebound to Snedeker, put it up and in. Snedeker with the basket. 23-17, our score right now with 327 left. First half. Lampkin has it against Delano. And he's given Delano all kinds of problems so far here in the first half. Reyes trying to get around Broster. Good defense by David. David is a 6'2 junior, 6'3 junior. Now the ball is taken away and stolen. Turnover number five. That was by Pinker. Now Broster with it. Broster gets it over to Delano. Wow. Almost a bad pass. Newman has it, throws it out of bounds. And that's what the team has to appreciate is that every possession so critical. Turnover number seven by your count, I believe. Yep. And that's very unofficial. 2.50 left to go in the first half. Dodson has it, now gets it over to Dickerson. Dylan Dickerson in the game, a sophomore. Now Beverly with it. Dodson has it, wants to get it to Lampkin, but tries to get around Newman. A lot of players. They can force the ball out of uh, his hand. A near steal there. And now Beverly with it, puts it up and in. But that's okay. That, that, they caught him, uh, Elsinore caught him on the rotations. And that's what gave him the opportunity for that basket. Oh, wow. Beverly with the block. Dodson with it, gets it to Preston. Now underneath to nobody. And it was off of Delano's hand. And that's okay too, because now it's 27 seconds left on the shot clock, 2.12 on the second quarter clock. And I think with 2.12 left, and Buda having two fouls and Chemezi too, Coach is going to try to ride this out if he can. Well, there comes the end one try. And, and maybe Preston Beverly with the shot. He has eight points. DeAndre Snedekor with his second personal, ninth team foul. Like 
So it can come to within one now, Rufus. And it's a still a two-point ball game. And you got to control the clock and the ball. It's what you got to do. Snedeker has it right underneath the basket, puts there it up go. and in. Four for DeAndre. Lampkin blowing by defenders, puts it up and uses the glass. 13 for Trayvon the senior. And it's a two-point game. Beckles puts it up and answers. He has five points. And a whistle. And I guess they wanted to switch inbounders. Preston Beverly will inbound it. Gets it to Lampkin with 135 left to go in the half. And what a half it's been. And, and if Lawndale with the strategy coach is playing now can hang on and at least go in tied. Now Lampkin ties it up. Nope, he's one point, one basket down. But Lampkin has 15. Gets it across the line. Delano with it. Now back to TJ. Newman has it. Gets it over to Beckles. Beckles wow. gets rid of his man. Puts it up, ball is blocked by Beverly, no call. And back comes Dodson. Dodson not fast enough to get by TJ. Beverly from outside, no, a little long. Broster okay. with the rebound. Okay, slow it down if you're Lawndale. TJ with it over right, Beverly, okay. but we have okay. a block and two shots. Getting up off the ground is Dodson. So that'll be his second personal, eighth team foul. And TJ looking for his first points of the game. What a game we've got going on here. And both teams looking very confident. Very yeah. confident and playing very well. Although it's a low scoring affair, we're seeing a good basketball game by both teams as TJ steps up and misses the foes. Back in the ball game is Lips for the Tigers, another sophomore. Well, they just keep rolling these kids in. Makes the second. One point for TJ. Lampkin has it. Boy, is this kid impressive. Gets around the fastest, one of the fastest Cardinals, but Delano picks his pocket. Delano over to DeAndre, puts it up. Wow. No, too hard off the glass. Rebound is taken by Lips. No, stolen by Broster. Put up and in by Broster. And a timeout or a whistle on the, ball, on the play. So what a play by David Broster, huh? Very seldom used, but gets a chance with the two big guys in foul trouble. Knocks the ball loose. Forces a turnover and they convert the turnover. Shot clock dark. You got a five point lead. I just play good defense and try not to do that. Oh boy, Preston Beverly with a terrific play. Has 10 points. And the and one coming up. DeAndre Snedeker. That's his second personal. And 16.1 seconds left. There you see Pete Redinger. And that's a situation where you're giving away points. Um. Now Beverly's warming up, it seems like, Rufus. What a game. Coming down to 10 seconds left, full court pressure. Broster with it. You've got to make sure that this is the, la the last possession of the game rather than a shot like that. Although they get away with it, so they'll go to the locker room with a slim two-point lead at 30 to 28. Both teams haven't played very well. Coach Brownlee down the stretch gambled, kept both his big men on the bench. They both had two fouls. He wanted to try to conserve them. He got away with it because he goes with a lead. By the same token, Elsinore, with Michael Taylor having two fouls, had to put him on the bench. And that was one of the reasons why he was able to take out Buda and Chemezi. Big second half being set up right here at Elsinore. Well, that's right. And 
What a game and all the scoring for the Tigers in the second quarter Rufus was done by Preston Beverly and Trayvon Lampkin and we told uh, we were told by the coaches coach Walter and Redinger that that's pretty much the way it's going to happen all night and then Taylor was going to be uh, getting the boards but I'm sure we'll see plenty of Taylor plenty of Matu and plenty of Buddha in this second half. Well, you absolutely will because so go those two guys, so goes Lawndale. And I think Coach Brownlee, excellent strategy on his part to conserve them in terms of staying out of foul trouble. So they've got a good complement of fouls to play with in the second half. All right, we'll come back, maybe get some coaches' interviews and give you the unofficial stats when we come back. This is the CIF Southern Section Ford Boys Basketball Championships presented by Farmers on City TV. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Back at Elsinore High School inside of McDowell Gym on Roberson Courts. It is the two AA semifinals of the Southern Section Four Basketball Championships presented by Farmers. There's Shemazi Matu and there are the Cardinal cheer squads. They flew out of the cage and finally made it here, Rufus. They certainly did. Better late than never though because this Lawndale team is going to need them. Boy, Elsinore, they certainly had their, for their fans turn out. I mean, they've got a sellout crowd just by themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had to squeeze everybody in. And uh, looks like we're going to get Chris Brownlee for a quick interview with Karen Bright. And uh, then we'll go over some of the scoring. Can tell you right now that Preston Beverly has 11 points and 15 points for Trayvon Lampkin. Two points for Anthony Reyes, and that's it in the scoring for the uh, Elsinore Tigers. Let's go to Karen. Coach, first half, how do you feel? Not good. I'd rather be talking to you at the end of the game with a victory. So um, we just let a little bit get away. We're in foul trouble. We got to do better. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, Karen, and I know that she talked to the Elsinore coaches as well, so we'll get a report on that. And uh, for the Lawndale Cardinals, like Rufus said, some balanced scoring going on. T.J. Johnson with one, six for Broderick Jones. Didn't score any in the uh, second quarter. Ten for Shemezi Matu, just two points in the second quarter. Two points for David Broster and uh, Brandon Newman with four. Four points for DeAndre Snedeker, but he also has two fouls. Five points for Delano Beckles. So they're getting scoring from all over the place, but the two guys for the Tigers are getting it done for Elsinore as well. They certainly are. And boy, as we mentioned, this half is going to be very all interesting right, here we go. because Lawndale has to play toward the student section here in the Elsinore gymnasium. And they have a red curtain up, so we're going to see. Uh, what happens <laughs> when uh, that is open? And now with it is White over to TJ. Now to Buddha Jones puts it up and, and one. Eight points for Buddha. And Michael Taylor wow. gets his third personal first team foul. And, and Taylor picks that foul up quickly. That does not help the Elsinore effort at all. And you see him heading to the bench. He's a guy that they have got to have on the floor in order for them to have a fair chance to win this game. And there you see what happens when you open that up. Nine points for Juke Buddha as he makes the free throw. It's 33 to 28, 740 left to go in the third quarter. Donson with it against TJ. Now over to Lampkin. We get to see him right in front of us. Boy, what a show he put on. 
in the second quarter especially. Now gets it around, oh, stolen away by Matu. Semezi with it around the back over to Delano's, back to Matu, and did he get fouled? No. Rebound is taken by Preston Beverly. Now Beverly with a hanging jump shot, won't go down, Matu with the rebound. Got to finish that. Six rebounds by my count. Look out, Reyes knocks it away and saves it. Lawnville just being sloppy with the ball. Three-pointer by Beverly. The turnover nearly cost him, but Beverly can't hit it. Buda comes down with the rebound. Without Michael Taylor there, they don't have any rebounders to speak of, but they're still fighting. Now TJ has it. TJ gets it out front, now slides it over to Beckles. White. On the zone, de against the zone defense, gets it to Buddha. Almost lost it. Got a little double low post. Too easy standing out top, not really getting involved in the play. No, now he picks up the loose ball and puts it up and in. He has a dozen. Eating up the shot clock. That was under 10 seconds left to go on the shot clock, Rufus. Longdale back out to a seven point lead. And again, controlling the boards. You gotta always, these Elsinore Tigers are a very pesky bunch, if you will, around the ball. TJ wow, too hard was, off the glass. Yeah, a little bit out of control by TJ there. That would have been a big basket. Now Lampkin gets it to Beverly, wide open three. In and out, rebound is tipped and out of bounds to the Cardinals. With 5.49 left to go in the third quarter. Kobe Williams in on the play, attempting the offensive rebound, couldn't control it for Elsinore. Got from behind, Taylor back in the ball game, Matu with it, takes it off the glass, and they're gonna call that a shooting foul, Rufus. Is that on? That's on Dodson, that's his third personal. As he uh, grabbed arm going up. That's a second team foul, Matu. Wow. Trying to find his first free throw make. He's missed four so far, make it five with that one. He's 0 for six tonight. How much importance are those six? Okay, and he's hanging his head. One of the things you want to see him do is get back in the game. That's that's done. Lampkin puts it up. Wow. Off the glass. 18 points for Trayvon. Just Puts him like right that, back he... in the game. Over to Buddha. No, oh, Shemezi with the big slam. 14 for the big guy. Now Lampkin has it, brings it across against Delano. Gets a screen from Taylor. Now he has Buddha and Lamas lost it, did lose it. Now he has a man with him, but he's gonna take it himself and put it away. <laughs> and Shemezi giving the crowd the business. Yeah, he's feeling good right now, 39-31 game. Not in the bank, you gotta keep it within the court. Taylor has it over to Beverly. Over Shemezi for three, that's an air ball. Out of bounds, turned it over. 10 turnovers for the Cardinals, a 30 second timeout taken. And I believe that's gonna be, they say the Cardinals? Well, still looking for the indication from the official. We're going to get it in a second. Okay. Taken so by the Tigers. Well, actually, that's his mechanic to tell him to start the clock. <laughs> so we don't really know who took the time out. I don't know. Unless maybe we've got a replay that can help us with it. At any rate, Brownlee right now is telling his guys to get their heads back in the ball right. game. And Shemesi is now or talking to one of the officials. Talking to Ted Tobias. So that would be an interesting conversation. With 439 left to go, the Cardinals have it, and they have an eight-point lead. And the ball. Cross court to Beckles. So if you're Elsinore right now, you gotta play good defense and you particularly gotta defend the big man because that's where your problem's coming from. 
Buda Jones, oh, that almost went in, it didn't. And Beverly comes up with a rebound. He has five. Now, coming down with it is Dylan Dickerson. Dickerson. First chance we've seen Dickerson tonight. He does the wise thing, gets it over to Beverly. Was the, the lead for Beverly, and Tra Taylor couldn't get it. And the rebound is taken by Jones. Now TJ with it, with just under four minutes left on the give and go, back to Jones, but TJ picks it up and fumbles it out of bounds. And, 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 a, and a lapse in concentration by Londell on that play, and that lapse created that turnover. Pass came to him, not expecting it. Turnover Londell, another missed opportunity by the Cardinals. And now the question is, can Elsinore, the Tigers, capitalize on the opportunities that Londell keeps giving? Nope, because the ball is stolen by Beckles over to Matu from the free throw line. Still can't make it from there as Donson with it. Rebound to Donson. Now he gets it over to Lankin. Beverly with it. The big two for Elsinore. It's back over to. Yeah, here's the matchup, boy. This is the one where Delano has to keep himself in front of him. And good things happen, team, when that, when that happens. Delano that time. Didn't get shaken uh, on the play by Lampkin. Or stirred on that crossover. Now Snedeker with it. Buda with the rebound. He's got four by my count. Now Broderick's from the elbow won't go down. Rebound by Taylor. And back he comes, coast to coast. And they're going to call a block on Messi Matu. That'll be his third first team foul. He's watching the replay. Boy. Okay. They call that a block. Look like his feet were set. <laughs> well, now, hey, you got to look at it from the Elsinore perspective. You've been told to do that. From the Elsinore perspective, it was a good call. Oh, absolutely. Because it would have been Taylor's fourth foul had it gone against him. And Quincy Pinker comes in the ball game. Taylor is second, and that gets a sweet roll off the grass. He's got two points. Cuts the lead to six. Pinkard with it. Put it on Buddha's foot, and a good save by Pinkard to Snedeker. Snedeker with it, has the ball knocked away by, Ta uh, by Taylor, and Buddha with the little baby hook shot. 11 points for Buddha. 2.40 left to go in the third quarter. Both of these teams, Scratching and Kwan, trying to get to Honda Center this weekend. And one of the things I was talking about with the Elsinore assistant coach, you know, both of these teams will get, I believe, an opportunity to go to the state tournament as that foul is going to be on DeAndre Snedekor. And his third. And second team foul. Shemezi comes out of the ball game. Brandon Newman comes in for the Cardinals. Ball inbounded by Lampkin to Beverly. Now over to Lips. Lampkin with it. I was going to say there was a mismatch, but <laughs> Lampkin, it doesn't matter if a 10 foot brick wall's there, he's still going to shoot over it. And they've tried a couple things against Lampkin, including a big man on him. And that doesn't work as well. Taylor that misses shot. the three, and it's picked up by Pinker. And that's not Taylor's strength, that shot from a distance like that. If you're Lawndale, here you want to work a little bit of the clock. 1.50 left to go in the third quarter. Brandon Newman on the drive, and now it's called a jump ball. It'll be turned over to the Tigers. So Newman tried to drive. And Lips, Zach Lips grabbing all ball. So 142 left to go in the third quarter. Lampkin with it, being guarded by Quincy Pinkard, one of the fastest Cardinals on the team. Beverly trying to blow by wow. Snedeker, but now the wow. fourth foul on Snedeker. And that's a tough one for DeAndre to take. 
I thought he had good defense rolling to the basket. Beverly able to draw the contact, and there you see the foul. Not sure if that's what he called, but DeAndre definitely poked Beverly in the eye. Inadvertent, that's for sure. You don't want to try to do that normally. Shemezi in for Snedeker. Ball is in, down low to Taylor. Taylor being guarded by Jones. Rebound is to Matu. Eight rebounds for Shemezi. Okay, once again, let's see how much time they run off the clock. Here with a minute 23 left. Buddha from the free throw line Virtually will go down. Done. And again, that's my point. The clock was uh, with more than 25 seconds left. Now the Tigers better watch it. There's backcourt violate. Oh boy, did that was that close. 24 seconds throughout the clock. Now Taylor for three. That's not going to go. Lips with the rebound against Newman. Zach with his first bucket of the game. Under a minute left to go in the third quarter. Ball in and in. Oh, backcourt was wide open for Shemezi Matu. 18 for the big guy. And 40 seconds left in the quarter. They get back on defense. Beverly drives and lays it in. Mercy. Is that kid something else? That's his first bucket of the quarter, Rufus. Yeah. You got to get the ball to a ball handler. The shot clock's off. You got to run the clock completely out. You have no need to score here. 19 seconds left in the quarter. Now up to Pinkard, but he lays it up and in. First basket for Quincy. 10 seconds left, full court pressure. Beverly with it. Don't let him shoot from half court. Whatever you do, don't Three, foul him. Let two, him go. Matu let him go. Okay. And he still got too close to him. And that ends the quarter. Two buckets by Beverly to end it for the Tigers. And Matu putting on a show for the Tiger faithful and the Cardinal faithful. And it's a six point lead. Let's go to Karen. Guys, an update from the Elsinore coaching staff. It's only at halftime that they have experience facing teams with this kind of depth and height, and that what they're going to try to do is go at the big for Lawndale to try to get in their head and mess up their rhythm so they can get back in this game. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Karen. Well, it sets Nelson. up a great fourth quarter, Lou. It's a, a six-point ball game, 45-39. And everybody and all the stars are in play. A little bit of foul trouble with DeAndre Snedek having four. But for right. Chimizi, he has three. But uh, Barger Jones only has two. And Micah Taylor, able for, um, for Elsinore, able to avoid his fourth foul. And that was key for them, very key. Right. So it's a six-point game. The halftime lead was eight points. Check that, no, two points, two points. So Lawndale outscores Elsinore 15 to 11 in the third quarter. Now, here we go, 15.7 points for Lawndale, 17.4 for the Elsinore Tigers. And we're just about ready to get things underway in the fourth quarter of the 2A semifinals. And here comes Pinkard, puts it up, can't get the roller, does he? Yes, he does. Pinkard with four points. Just underway here in the fourth quarter, CIF Southern Section 4 Basketball Championship presented by Farmers. The winner goes to the Honda Center for the championship, and they will play the winner of Tesoro and Canyon Anaheim. We have a foul on the play on TJ, his second personal, fourth team foul. 14 fouls for Londale, two for Elsinore. Beverly will inbound it, gets it to Lips, will give it right back to Preston. Preston with 15 points. He averages 23, blows by the defense and puts it in the cup. 17 points for the senior. Over to TJ, lays it in for his first bucket of the game, and he has three. Dodson with it. Dribbles with the left hand. Right now, Taylor on the bench for Elsinore. Wow. And they give a 
pushing foul to Shemezi. And that's, that's going to be his fourth. And 15 foul. Taylor comes back in the game for Lips. Let's watch the replay. And, and, and that's one of those barely contact fouls. You know, Shemezi begging to stay in. And Coach Brownlee wisely said, no, we've got seven minutes to go. I can't afford to have you foul out this early. I need you down the stretch inside of four minutes. Taylor with it, going up against Buddha. Good defense. Rebound is off to Pinker. Now to Newman. You got some good, quick guards out there for Lawndale. Buddha with it, top of the key. Gets it to Brandon. Newman against Lampkin. Now underneath to Snedeker from the free throw line. Looks like he traveled, he did. Basket doesn't count, turnover on the Cardinals. That's a dozen. Wow. And Lawndale has not been able a couple of times. They have been sitting on eight. At one point, they sat on, eight, on an eight-point lead for two minutes, not able to extend it. Else are more fortunate, and let's see if they can take advantage of the turnover. Lampkin brings it over to Dodson. 2-3 zone shown by the Cardinals. Reyes has it, gets it over to Nathaniel. Dodson trying to get around TJ. 13 seconds on the shot clock, gets it over to Lampkin with nine seconds on the shot clock. Coming down to five, he'll drive, put it up and under, and it was partially blocked Buddha with it, and wow. Reyes is wow. all over him like a dirty shirt. Brandon okay. Newman with it. Newman gets it up, but look out for Taylor. And right over us. And there goes our headphone amplifier. Thanks, bud. And I've lost some sound in one. There we there go. We Thank go. you, Lou. No problem. So now the ball is out of bounds and some good defense by Elsinore. And the whistle was swallowed by the officials. Newman has it, double team, gets it to TJ. TJ has it poked away, it's out of bounds with 11 seconds on the shot clock, 5.38 in the fourth quarter. Pinkard inbounds it, gets it back from Newman, down low to Snedeker, drives in on Williams, loses the ball, and is it a jump ball, or what is it? Good Haven't ball. seen a call. Tigers. Ball. And, and that's okay. I, I, I'd rather see at this stage in the quarter, rather than burn a timeout, trying to keep possession of the ball, you'll get that back, okay? You got 532 left. I think good decision by DeAndre not to utilize the timeout. But again, a turnover by the Lawndale Cardinals, and the question is, can Elsinore, last trip down, they didn't take advantage of it. You don't get many of these opportunities over the course of a game sooner or later. Oh, there's a steal by Pinkard. Pinkard going against Dodson, but wow. Beverly blocks it away. That's his third block of the game. Over to Taylor. Taylor against Buddha. Look out. Williams lays it in. His first bucket of the game. Four point swing. And that timeout's taken by. It's a 30 second timeout taken by Elsinore. Yep. Yep, that's a big four point swing. Nice pass by Taylor. And give Beverly a lot of credit. Pass the rest to Beverly. That was a fast break play for Quincy Pinker. Beverly never gave up on the play. And that's what good players do. They don't give up on the play. And he is that. As advertised. And that basket scored by Kobe Williams. So he's the only player since the first quarter, besides Beverly and Lampkin to score a basket. There's Brandon Newman. And Coach Brownlee decides to bring Chimiza Me Too back with the four fouls. Coming down to five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Pinker gives it to Buddha, drives against Beverly, 
And rebound to Matud, no. And Beverly, wow. did he get fouled or will they call him on the foul? No, no they're gonna say he was fouled by Buda. That's his third, 16 fouls, so now the Cardinals are out of fouls. Only two team fouls on the Tigers. So Beverly putting his team on his back. The ball is almost stolen by Pinker. Dodson has it. Dodson gets it out for Lampkin from the parking lot. No, rebound is off to Pinker. And you gotta slow the ball down. Still, you wanna run your offense, but you gotta work a little more out of the shot clock than five or six seconds. 4.27 left to go in the fourth quarter. Counting down to 20 seconds on the shot clock. TJ with it, takes a running jumper from the baseline. The ball is tipped by Matu. Pinkard around the back, pass! Whoa. And Jones oh. didn't even get up for the dunk. Look so out, Lampkin with it. Knows Matu has four fouls. And that foul should go underneath, I believe, it'll go against Quentin Pinkard. Yes. So Pinkard gets the foul, his first. Lampkin didn't make the bucket, so he'll get two at the line. He has 18 points. This is the first one. Anthony Reyes coming in for Michael Taylor. As Coach Redinger not willing to risk Taylor getting his third foul or fourth foul. Lampkin makes the second. He now has 19 points. And it's a five-point ball game at 49-44. And Lawndale going through a little bit of a cold spell. Newman with it. Newman now back out front to TJ. 3.52 left to go in the fourth quarter. And the mismatch is on the two. And a foul on Dodson. And, of course, that's only their third team foul here in the second half. So the ball will be out of bounds. A little uh, a hand check there. And back There's in the ball game is Taylor. somebody we haven't seen in a while, come to think of it. Who's that? Delano Beckles. Okay. And he's back in the ball game. Delano, no fouls, and he hasn't scored a bucket since uh, the second quarter. Has five points. And he's set for a long time, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not Delano is warm at this point in the game after having sat so long. 3.23 left in the fourth oh. quarter and the ball's thrown away by Pinker. A wasted opportunity for the Cardinals, trying to eat some time off the clock. And they have not been able to find the basket once they've been around it. Snedeker in for Matu. Trying to save well, Chemezi from his he, fifth foul. He's doing the offense-defense thing. He'd rather have Chemezi in the game on Obviously. the offensive end of the floor. So he doesn't want to pick up that foul on defense. Good coaching by Coach Brown. Lampkin gets it to Beverly against Brandon Newman. Now gets around a pick from Taylor. And no, won't go in. But boy, is he up there with their offensive rebound. And he has 19 points. And it's a one possession game now in Elsinore. 2.52 left in the fourth quarter and the jungle is starting to screech. Now Brandon Newman with it. Newman into the corner to Buda. Beverly with good defense on him. Newman gets to Beckles. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Now Newman drives the wing against Dodson, slips and falls, and has the ball, no whistle. Now there's a whistle. Jump ball, Cardinals. Lawndale has the possession. Two seconds left on the shot clock, though. Exactly, and because they retain possession, the shot clock will stay at two. Brandon fighting for his life as the Cardinals are fighting to stay over the Tigers with 2.28 left to go, two seconds, a shot taken, air ball, and out of bounds, a turnover. 15 
on the Cardinals. Shemezi comes in for Snedeker. Wow. With 2.24 left in the fourth. And Buda gets a rest, a much needed rest. He won't be out for long. And Chris White comes in for him. And now you got to guard the three-point line if you're Lawndale and if you're Elsinore, they're asking for a timeout. And boy, good timeout taken by them. But also, if you're Lawndale, a very helpful timeout for them. With 2.15 left in a three-point ball game, 49-46, here at Elsinore High School. I believe that's the fourth timeout taken by Elsinore, if we're correct. And there you see the Lawndale faithful that made it across to the Inland Empire. <laughs> and the Tiger faithful in the jungle. What a basketball home. You know, my uh, daughter-in-law was the head cheerleader at Temesco, not my daughter, my daughter was the uh, head cheerleader up the street at Temesco Canyon. Her husband, U.S. Army Captain Scott Eaton, was the quarterback of the wing tee offense up there. Is that right? And so you're right at home out here. Hey, and uh, tell you what, when I told Cassie that uh, we were coming into the lair of the tiger, she said, go Cardinals. <laughs> well, that's good. She, Cardinals gonna need all they can get because right now, this crowd here at uh, Elsinore High School clearly favoring their team. They sure are, and that's good to see. Great crowd here tonight. Cardinal Red, Tiger Red. 2.09 left to go in the fourth quarter. A three-point ball game. Beverly wants to tie it. Lampkin gets it, puts it up and under. What a play by so that's Michael Taylor. He has four points. That's his first field goal of the night. It's a one-point game. Everybody's on their feet for the Tigers. Newman has it. Now White, give and go wow. to Pinkert. Okay, there you and go. And there's the... That was an easy one. That's only team foul number four, though. That one's gonna go against Michael Taylor. That's also his fourth foul. So back in the ball game is Buddha Jones, and there you see the foul. In for Chris White. Newman has it. A new 35 up for Lawndale. Now Delano Beckles, he's been quiet in the scoring. Hasn't scored since the second quarter, and they're just going to eat time off the clock as we have the Carolina Four Corners offense. Looking for how they can get the ball to Chimizu. Newman drives, shoots, scores. Oh, yes. Brandon Newman. Six points for Brandon. And that was a long time between baskets. Breaks a 7-0 run by Elsinore. Beverly, now to Lampkin. The offensive duo for the Tigers. Under a minute left to go in the fourth quarter. An opportunity to play for the sectional title. Here comes for the tie. A little bit short. Oh, yeah. Rebound is off. Uh, tipped oh, away. Oh, oh. Can Delano get to it? He does. Scores. Oh, yeah. Beckles. His first basket since the fourth quarter and timeout on the floor. He has seven points and makes it a two possession ball game for Londa for the Tigers with 40 seconds left. And still a lot of basketball time left. For those who don't, some of the fans understand, not fully appreciate, you've got 40 seconds on the clock and one of the things that Londell has not shown themselves to be very efficient at is clock management. And this is where it comes into play more so than ever. But if you're Elsinore, as I said, the main thing is it's only a two possession game. That's it. With a 35 second, full 35 second shot clock and 5.1 seconds besides. So I'm sure the ball is going to go to one of two guys. Oh, we, absolutely. It's going to go to Preston Beverly. Or Lampkin. Or Lampkin. And remember, you got Michael Taylor back out on the floor. And he's a third option, but he's an inside option. He's That's tried right. a couple of outside shots. That's not his forte. 
Now Beverly can shoot it from the outside, and Lampkin can shoot it from the outside. So it remains to be seen. Captain Stone, Captain House in the house. Coach House. 37 seconds left to go. A five second switch between the game clock and the shot clock. Look out. Almost a backcourt violation by Lampkin. Lampkin with it. Lampkin wants to put up the three, gets it to Reyes. Back to Lampkin with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Throws a wild prayer over. The ball is tipped out of bounds, though, by Jones. It'll be. And Lampkin just threw it up with nowhere. It'll be Elsinore ball with nine seconds left on the shot clock. And 14 ball seconds for Lawndale away from going to the Division II double-A final. Dodson puts it up. That won't and go down. Rebound to Beckles with seven seconds left. He's fouled by Reyes with 5.5 left in the fourth quarter, leading 53 to 48. And you've got to get back on the court and play if you're Lawndale. It's not over yet by a long shot. Timeout on the floor with 5.5 left. Now, if that foul was on Dodson, can we see that replay once more? Full timeout. Wow. And, there and they put is some post. time back on the clock, first of all. That's, and that's, that's the key. right thing to do. Okay, they put time back at 6.3. Okay, the foul is on Reyes. Thanks, Tom. And so they've that's only got five personal. fouls, so they've got to foul quickly if they want to extend this thing at all. That's right. We might have to stand up on our seat again. <laughs> So 53 to 48 is our score. The 7-0 run by Elsinore was quelled. And then here we go. Brandon Newman gets fouled by Dodson and ouch. And that's only the 16 foul. And now we're under five seconds left. So they've got to foul at least once more. I believe that was the fifth foul on Dodson. So in comes Dylan Dickerson for him. Now here's the main thing. Folks, we still got a game. 4.9 seconds left. First thing Londell has to do is get the ball in bounds. And, and they do that Wow. Newman gets fouled by Dickerson in a flying foul. So. Are they going to call that? That's double bonus or bonus time right now, one and one, with 3.4 seconds left to go, and Brandon Newman coming to the line. One of the biggest shots of Brandon Newman's career, and he sinks it. Brandon Newman with the free, with the front end of the one and one makes Seven it a six-point ball game, and that will virtually seal the game for Lawndale as they're ahead to the finals. Misses the second one. Long shot by Taylor. Won't go down. Buda comes up with it. And Lawndale Cardinals are going to the Honda Center for the first time in school history for the two AA finals of the CIF Southern Section 4 Basketball Championships presented by Farmers. And they will take on either Tesoro or Canyon Apaches of Anaheim. This is a special moment in the history of this Lawndale program. Sure is, Rufus. I know you've been doing this for a long time. Whoops. And what a game it was. And so now. Uh, so we've got to get Pandemonium right out there right here. now. 
to get uh, some interviews. But uh, Rufus, what a game. What a game. A great effort, first of all, by this Elsinore team that came into this, this tournament seeded, and we'll get that for you in a second down here in the bottom. Seventh. Elsinore they were seeded was seeded seventh. seventh. Uh, they were number one in the Sun Belt. And, and what? Uh, they put up a game, game fight. Well, they sure did. Well, Michael Taylor and Preston Beverly and Trayvon Lampkin just weren't enough for Shemezi Matu, Broderick Jones, uh, you name it. Then uh, Delano Beckles, Brandon Newman, and uh, TJ Johnson. They were all part of this big, big game here. There's Buddha Jones out there right now. And Karen Bright's looking for a camera person to get an interview. And because Buddha Jones is out there. I like to get everybody to get off the court. Now they're trying so to get everybody off the court. Get off the court. So that's the Elsinore people trying to get everybody off the court. But what a game. Start the the finals please. are going to be please sometime on Saturday. On As there you see Rufus taking, taking our picture of the picture. <laughs> Let's take a picture of the camera guy there. There you go. All right. <laughs> and uh, doesn't happen too often that we get to bring you uh, yeah. a championship team to the South Bay area. Right. And the runner up in the Ocean Basketball League takes on and beats Elsinore and uh, boy they certainly showed why they were the uh, Sunbelt champions nine and one in the league there so congratulations to them on a fine season as well as the Cardinals. Absolutely and, and they played it to the end. I mean this team knew coming in that they had some mismatches in different places but they had their own game plan as their coaching staff told us they executed it nearly to perfection it was only a 6.2 possession game right it could have swung either way but if you're a Longdale Cardinal fan you're happy it swung your way if you're an Elsinore Tiger fan you're disappointed that yet again for the fourth straight year you come up just short of making it to the sectional final. That's right. Well, Quincy Pinkard and Delano Beckles with the final two buckets of the game, and those were huge, uh, especially in Cardinal lore. And Delano Beckles did it again. Right. We didn't hear from him pretty much uh, for the entire second half. And uh, is Karen ready? Now let's go to Karen. Coach, congratulations. You guys are starting a trend of making school history yes. and also closing out fourth quarters. How do you feel about tonight's game? Uh, we played very well down the stretch. All the kids played well that played. Brandon no Newman played super poised down the stretch to carry this thing on because uh, he made a big shot to put us up three. Um, and then we got the stop we needed when we were in major foul trouble. We had uh, three people with four across the board. Um, we went to a zone late and uh, just extended it out on their three-point shooters. And uh, just all, I mean, thanks to God that we're able to go to the um, championship. We've had a lot, of, uh, a lot of obstacles all year. A lot of obstacles all year, man. But we've had the talent. A lot of people saw that, and they were uh, questioning things. But uh, we got to go and get it Saturday. We're just so great and thankful to God that we're able to go to Anaheim for the first time uh, you know, in school history and uh, to go get a plat. Now we just go, got to go earn a gold. So we're going to get into the uh, to the practice gym and get ready for Tesoro Canyon. And Elsinore is a team that's not like any other team you've really seen. They had so many different strategies, came at you guys so many different ways. And for the first time, we really saw your guys be able to adjust and completely overcome that. What do you think that means Actually, moving that's forward? That's not true over our schedule because a lot of people hadn't seen us in Sacramento and uh, Torrey Pines. So the teams that we played down there, especially Tory Mines, who's 29 and two, is just like this. Um, who else? Oak Ridge on our schedule is just like this. Christian Brothers, just like this. And we won close games like that, and we had to pull them out. So it's a credit to our scheduling this year with this group to be able to come into an environment with a team that's disciplined. Beverly uh, runs, a, you know, similar stuff, and um, we got caught up. So. We had, we, on our whole schedule, we had disciplined teams, we've had super athletic teams, we've had every, all the whole gamut of uh, scheduling to get us prepared to go to the championship on Saturday. Well, 
came through in this big semifinal game. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And uh, back court side with Rufus Washington, and uh, somehow you held your composure, partner. <laughs> well, it, it was a big game, but, but again, boy, you don't experience many of these moments at any level, and for us to have the opportunity to experience it um, here with the Lawndale Cardinals is special. It was also, I gotta say this to the folks at El, Seg at El Segundo, I knew I was gonna say that eventually, <laughs> Elsinore, their hospitality from the moment we arrived here has been nothing but superb. Uh, the assistant principal who we talked to at length about it, the head coaches, everybody that we encountered, even the secretary, the head coach at the uh, Jack in the Box. That's right. <laughs> All right. And so, we, yeah, we ran nice. into a lot of fans out there. Absolutely. So, you know, it was a good trip out, long trip from home. Hats off to the uh, Longdale Cardinal fans for making the trip. Uh, but a special hats off as we start to recognize uh, special uh, special players tonight. But a special hats off to this Elsinore Tiger program. Yeah. Their student body. Uh, their, 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 their leadership from the principal's office down and their athletic leadership. Now they let's they go. were very gracious hosts. Absolutely. Tonight. Let's go out to center court and Karen. I'm here with UTEP commit Chris White. Chris, how do you feel right now after this big win? Um, I feel just satisfied. We did it as a team and we just accomplished the goal that Coach Brownlee set for us. And this is a great feeling tonight. You guys had different guys show up for you at different points in the game. It truly was a team effort. What changed in you guys to make you guys be able to do that tonight? Uh, honestly, the defensive side just like brought the intensity to the game. Once we started playing defense, we started scoring more, and that just led to the lead, and then we just won from there. And this is an extremely tough gym to play in. Did that curtain of distraction uh, get to you guys at all? Uh, Coach Brownlee prepared us at practice for it. So like it was kind of like a factor, but it really wasn't. So we were just prepared for it already. Well, congratulations. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And uh, she's going to be getting us interviews of as many players and coaches as we can. And uh, just a terrific night. So you just kind of had a feeling that uh, it was going to uh, uh, be a good good game for the Cardinals. But uh, you also knew that they had to play their game as well. And that is for sure. Well, uh, why don't we do want to take a time out right now? Then we can uh, add up the totals and pick our, pick our player of the game and tip of the hat. Catch our breath. All right, and get out oh, on yeah. the floor and oh, do yeah. a little celebrating of our own. Oh, yeah, that. If we're permitted to, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's take this time out on the CIF Southern Section Ford Basketball Championships presented by Farmers. The 2AA semi was won by the Lawndale Cardinals, and they will nest at Honda Center this Saturday. Come we'll be Saturday. back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Back here at Elsinore High School, and we have a special guest with Karen Bright. Coach, your guys really had a target on their backs, Chemezi and Broderick. They showed so much composure and maturity tonight. How does that feel? Man, it feels real good. It's been a hard season for those guys. Uh, they came in and had a really good uh, couple of days of practice, so uh, we had focus on what they need to be doing inside, and they came out and they completed the job. Now, tonight was a, such a tough comp competition. What does that do for you guys moving forward into the finals, having this under your belt, this win? Uh, we're really happy about it. We've been game tested. Uh, we had a couple of hard games all season. So we came in and uh, they just looked like they were ready, you know, so we're really happy and proud of these guys. And it sounded like the celebration was pretty big in the locker room. Was it going nuts in there? Um, yeah, it's the first time we, um, we poured water on Coach Brownlee, so he got the ice treatment got with the ice bucket. So, um, like I said, it's first time in school history. These kids, they deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you guys. 
All right, uh, Shemezi Matu is right around the corner there, so we'll get him real quick. And uh, while we're doing that, uh, Karen is wrangling him. Rufus is out there helping produce as also. So why don't we go over some of the scoring? And uh, Nathaniel Dodson fouled out, didn't have any points. And he played some good defense and running the points all night long for the Tigers. 19 points for Preston Beverly, but he was only held to four points in the fourth quarter. So good defense on uh, Preston Beverly. And let's go back to Karen. Chimezi, you had such a great game, both offensively and defensively. It looked like you were on both sides of the court at the same time. How does this win feel? Uh, it feels really good. You know, I couldn't really play as aggressive as I wanted to on defense because I, I got to foul so late. And, uh, but it, it feels really good. We finally, finally got over the hump going to the championship game. You have to ask, was that curtain of distraction back there? Did it get to you guys at all? Oh, I didn't even notice it was there, honestly. But I was, I was just wasn't making, I wasn't making my free throws, wasn't making my free throws this game. So I mean, it was really tough. And yeah, this was one, a game where you and Broderick's really had a target on your backs. They were going for you guys hard. How did you guys have the composure to pull through? Uh, people have been doing that all season. You know, they've been trying to, they've been trying to get under our skin and. People have been telling us to just play cool, and I mean, and today we did that, and we got the W. It paid off, and we'll see you at the Honda Center next. Congrats. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Karen, and lots of people congratulating Rufus, and uh, deservedly so. He's been uh, in these wars for many, many years. But Jamezzi was talking about making his free throws. He was over six. And I six. like that he was honest about yeah. that. You know, because that's how you get better is recognizing the things that did, you didn't do as well. So good for him. Let's go it back was to good Karen. To see, <laughs> it was good to see Shemezi smile there after a game. Now well, let's go to Karen. All right. I'm here with Broderick Jones. Broderick, you had a game tonight. What was it like out on the floor? Oh, it felt great, man. We just played with confidence, played our game tonight. That's what Coach told us to do. That's what we did. And making school history, going to the finals. How does that feel? It's great, especially for our school for the first time to pass, get past the third round and make it to the championship. It's a big bonus for us. We worked so hard the whole year. Nobody believed it, but we did it though. Now I asked Chemezi, you and Chemezi really had targets on your back tonight. They were going for you hard. How did you guys keep your composure to stay in the game? Uh, we just, our coach told us just play our game, don't get frustrated. Cause we know they'll come out here and play physical. All we gotta do is play hard, and keep playing physical. Well, you had an incredible game, and the next time we'll see you is at the Honda Center. Congrats. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Karen. And the uh, cavalcade of guests keep going on. So until then, uh, the next guest, Zach Lips, had two and 19 for Trayvon Lampkin. And I'll tell you what, the, the Lampkin and Beverly combining for 38 points tonight. And uh, they really no did surprise put on a show. there. No, we were told that those were the two guys, and they certainly were. And two Be points. Beverly's kind of a Larry Bird type of guy. Yeah, I mean, he is. He, yeah, he is. Yeah, he has a great game. You know, you don't see it happening, but all of a sudden, and that block that he got up here, that was a big he didn't one. give up on the play. Kept the I Tigers mean, that, in the game. That, that's what's Bird like. Never, ever give up. Outside, right. inside, and uh, boy, can he shoot it. He, he, could, he could shoot it from, uh, from Mud Lick or wherever, <laughs> French Lick, that's where it is. There you go. Let's go to Karen. All right, we are talking to the man, Zeleno Beckles. What a great game you guys had tonight. How, how did it feel? Oh, it feels great. You know, we're making history. You know, it, it, feel, it feels great. I can't explain the feeling right now. I just feel so great right now. Now, you guys were getting down to the wire a little bit. They came within one point of you in the fourth quarter. How did you guys pick yourselves up to clinch the win? It was more hungry than they were. We had the juice tonight. <laughs> it was more hungry. And I heard you guys had a big celebration in the locker room. What was that like? Oh, it feels great. Like, I feel like we won the championship there, but we got one more. We got one more. And your team seems to be extra focused and working together so much better now. Did something change? Uh... Yeah, our all our attitudes change because we all want the same goal. We all wanted to reach the same goal because it's like 10 seniors on the team. So we want to leave some hardware. Well, congratulations. It's paying off, and we'll see you at the Honda Center. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And finishing off the yeah, scoring for the Tigers. Her check. You should, yes. Yeah. Well, Tom should, not me. I'm trying to get him to put a little extra in mine. Yeah. <laughs> I gave up. Anyway, <laughs> two points for Anthony Reyes, two points for Kobe Williams, and four points for Michael Taylor. 
holding the uh, third offensive option uh, to uh, well under. That's uh, about nine points under his average on the night. Early and he also took him out of the game. That's right. Had uh, credited him uh, with uh, just four rebounds. And for the Cardinals, who are flying to Honda Center on Saturday night for the 2AA championship, T.J. Johnson had three points. Broderick Jones had 11. Four points for Quincy Pinkard. 16 points for Shemezi Mutu to go with nine rebounds. And uh, Broderick's had uh, credited him with four. Also had three blocks. Three blocks for Shemezi as well. And David Broster had, a, had two points. And that was a big bucket for David. Big bucket and big minutes. Remember, he right. came in with two minutes left in the first half when Coach Brownlee, I think, made perhaps the decision of the game. Uh, he played chess because he saw that Taylor was out and he knew that they had no inside. So he could afford to take his two big men out and play small ball with them. Uh, they only lost two points on that exchange. That's why it was a two-point game at the half. And now, and Broster, the point is, David Broster was the guy that came in and held the fort. That's right. And seven points for Brandon Newman. He had three big points, a big three-point play the old-fashioned way in the fourth quarter. Four points for DeAndre Snedeker and uh, played some good minutes in, in the middle as well because uh, Shemezi was in trouble, so DeAndre had to get in the middle and get dirty with uh, uh, Preston Beverly and Michael Taylor. Which we've seen him do time and time again this season. Not not as big a game as we're accustomed to seeing DeAndre. Hey, maybe that'll come Saturday. But again, made his contributions. And the other thing to rec recognize, and I think DeAndre is a junior, if I'm not mistaken, and we'll confirm that. Um, but, you know, you know that he's a valuable component because he replaces either one of the two big men. And what a right. luxury that is to have a guy of his talent to come in to replace either Me Too or Bardix Jones. And seven points. What can you say about Delano Beckles? Well, you can say this. He's going to tell his big brother, I got something you don't got. I got all to right? play at the Honda Center. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. among other things. But always a guy, you know, and, 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 I'm, and I'm still struck by the fact that I was surprised because, you know, he had been off the floor for so long. Yeah. And when he came back, it was like, oh, wow, that's right. They do have that Delano guy. Beckles. Oh, yeah, there's you that know? guy. Exactly. And what a difference he made. We've talked about this all season. What a luxury it's been for Lawndale to have the kind of depth that they have. I mean, they, they are virtually too deep at every position. And that worked out well for him tonight. It sure did. So now it's time for, well, heck with the game. That was exciting. But now... <laughs> We've got the player of the game and the tip of the hat. Now let's show the brim. Well, this one's been around for a while. Now we may be looking at something new if you get the opportunity to see it come Saturday, all right? Because obviously this is a special moment. I'm gonna see if there's anything I can do in honor of what Saturday promises to be for everybody affiliated with the Lawndale program, affiliated with the City TV. We've had the luxury and the honor and the privilege to be there a couple of times in the past. Our first time with Lawndale, though, and their crowd has just right. been terrific. They sure have. You know, and their fan support Two bus loads. that they brought out here tonight. That's so you can imagine how many people, if you only got to go to the Honda Center compared to coming way out here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the player of the game tonight is, uh, well, Shemezi Matu came up big tonight. So he is our player of the game. 16 points and nine rebounds and three blocks. And, uh, boy, what a game he had and a lot of confidence. And he kept his cool and had fun out there tonight. Kept his cool, had fun, played big, played like the guy that they needed him to be. And every time they needed a basket, he was there, you know, and again, if you recall the broadcast, you heard me talk about it in the first half. They completely controlled the defensive boards. Yes, I they mean, did. offensive rebounds were extremely difficult for Elsinore to come by, and in part, that was due to Chemezi down low and the other guy we're going to talk about in a minute. That's right. Well, the tip of the hat, uh, what guy, was it Delano? Or is tip it of the hat. Broderick well, Del Delano or, is a or well, let's go or through some of it? these guys who are previous tip of the hat winners. OK, you got Delano. He's one. You got Brandon Newman. He's one. Mm -hmm. You got Quincy Pinkard. He's one. You got uh, DeAndre, DeAndre. Snedeker. All right. Yeah. He's won it before tonight. Neither one of those guys is the winner, no. but another one of their teammates and a guy who played big and was a part of and has been a part of what has made beating this Lawndale team so difficult. Yes, and that's yes. the other twin tower. Who's that? None other than number two, 
not number two, number one. See, I just wanted to fool you guys, see if you were paying attention. Number one, Broderick Jones. All right, Broderick, you played big tonight, big baskets. <laughs> you are the tip of the hat award winner, my man. All right, and again, you along with the rest of the team, we're going to see all the tip of the hat winners come Saturday there at the go. pond. 11 points and four rebounds and three blocks for Buddha Jones. He's our tip of the hat player. And yep, look at that. I love that feather. Is that pheasant? It is indeed. It is indeed. Pheasant see? tasted good too. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah, oh, let me see. You see that a little right there. <laughs> okay, no. A <laughs> little bit of that. Well, I don't think that was ketchup from the fries. That was from the pheasant. No, well, well, why don't we uh, tie this up and put there it up on go. the windshelf and this, uh, get this, on out of here. This one's a donor, but it was fun. All you right. know, it's a special moment for us, just like it was for, for these kids. And, and it's a memorable moment, but they've got one more big memory that they can make before it's all said and done. All right. Put your finger on there. We'll tie the bow. There we go. Uh, ooh, rattle around. <laughs> it's up on the windshelf. And uh, boy, what a game it was, that's for sure. As uh, Lawndale will take on the winner of uh, Tesoro or the Canyon High Apaches of Anaheim. So that should be terrific for, uh, in, uh, come on, well, what a game it's going to be. Boy, it tell absolutely you what. will be. Two and, Orange be County reminded. teams. Yep. Lawndale, the highest remaining seed. They came in seeded number four. One's gone, two's gone, three's gone. Last yeah, we man were, standing is number four. We were wondering, it was, it's kind of like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid when uh, they're looking back and seeing the Pinkerton guys still gaining on them. <laughs> exactly. You were wondering, who are these Tigers? I mean, they beat Glendora. They, they just battered them 53 to 31. But Absolutely. Lawndale comes, comes along and, and beats them 54 to 48. Well, for Rufus Washington and Karen Bright, I'm Lou Stowers, and also for the three-time Star Award-winning crew led by Tom Strickfadden. And the final score once again from Elsinore High School inside of McDowell Gymnasium on Roberson Court. The Lawndale Cardinals fly into the finals of the 2A ace uh, bracket with a big 54-48 win over the Elsinore Tigers, the number seven seed. Until next time, so long.